It's coffee time, it's coffee time, it's the one pot chef drinking coffee in time. That's the crappiest intro ever. Welcome to Coffee Time, the monthly chat show here on the One Pot Chef blog where I answer questions sent in by you guys. So before we get started, if you've got any questions that you would like to ask me for the next edition of Coffee Time next month, please leave them in the comments section below. Don't leave them on Twitter or Facebook or anything like that because it makes it too difficult to try and find them in a month's time. So just leave them all in the comments section below. Okay, so let me find my questions, which it's for some reason not letting me open. Ah, there she blows. Okay, so first question. How cold does it get in Australia in winter? Uh, from Jazza385. Good question. Uh, it's different in different parts of the country. Where I live on the East Coast, it can get down as low as probably zero degrees Celsius. Um, it's usually not that cold roughly. It's usually around this sort of time of year, it's probably about five degrees at night. Um, sometimes it gets a little colder. It depends on the wind from the ocean as well, because that can really sort of drop it down in winter. There are other parts of Australia where it gets much colder. It snows, it gets icy. Um, I went for a little road trip uh, a couple of weeks ago up to Bathurst, which is in central New South Wales, and it was a lot colder there. So um, kind of lucky where I am. Uh, next question. Can you show us out the, your window to your left, please? I can, but I won't. And the reason I'm not doing it is because outside that window there is a fairly identifiable landmark. And so if I show you guys, it's going to give people a very good idea of where I live and I don't really need sort of random internet loonies knocking on my door. So um, yeah, I, I won't be showing out the window, but um, happiness prevails. Uh, next question. What is your favorite letter, number, word and sound from Virgo Flow? Okay. Favourite letter? Um, F. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Um, Favourite number? Probably 12. I'm not sure why. I've always had a bit of a blind spot for 12s. Uh, Favourite word? My favourite word isn't a real word, but I love the word nonetheless. It's contrafibularities, simply because it sounds like a real word, and if you put it into a conversation, it makes you sound a lot more intelligent. So, contrafibularities. I like that one. Favourite sound? Mmm. Sound of a fresh packet of Tim Tams being opened up. Mmm. Love that sound. Uh, do you have any plans of coming to Melbourne anytime soon? Uh, I don't have any plans to come to Melbourne soon. I would love to go to Melbourne. I haven't actually put any plans together, but I keep meaning to sort of go down to Melbourne. The problem is I don't actually get a lot of time to travel much these days. Um, so I haven't really thought about it too much, but I've always wanted to go down to Melbourne and have a look around sort of the art galleries and go to St Kilda and see those patisseries and things like that. All sort of, I don't know, sort of artsy fartsy stuff. I'm a bit of a nerd that way, but I'd love to go down there sometime. Uh, you allude a lot to back injuries and neurological problems. If it's not too personal, could you tell us how and why you were injured? Um, from Miss Jane Doe 124. I won't give you specific details, but um, I've got uh, several kinds of injuries to my back. I've got two ruptured spinal discs, which uh, could be operated on, but the risks of complications from it are a bit too hard, so I've decided not to go ahead with it. Um, I figure there's no point in going into surgery where there's like a better than 50% chance I could come out in a wheelchair, so I haven't bothered with that. As for the rest of it, I've also got um, osteoarthritis of the lower spine. Um, I've had it for quite some time, and so combine those two things and you've got quite a very painful spinal issue. Um, neurological problems have stemmed from that. I've got, um, basically, I'm in constant pain because of this. There's no sort of real relief. I do have some high end pain medication, which I can take. Unfortunately, it leaves me in a very bad mental state. I can't think properly. I'm very sort of, it's like basically getting stoned and there's no point in me being a drugged up zombie because I can't do anything. I just sit there giggling like a lunatic. So I only take it when it's absolutely at its most excruciating. But because of that, 
the amount of pain I've been, it's caused damage to me. So my memory is badly affected. Uh, my concentration is affected. So I have to do a lot of mental exercises, doing crossword puzzles and things like that to try and keep my brain going. So um, basically what happened was I was injured in a workplace injury. It was a workplace injury. Um, I won't go into specific details of it because there was a legal case and things like that. But um, it wasn't like a car accident or anything like that. But um, it was a progressive injury. It got worse and worse because um, uh, certain practices at the work that I was in, it made it worse and worse. But basically, um, yeah, I don't like sort of getting into it too much. But yeah, that's basically the majority of problems. There's a few other issues as well, but I'm not getting into it on YouTube. So anyway, happy thoughts. Move on to a happier question. What have we got? Uh, Lucy Lou TV. Okay. Um... In society today and in general, has political correctness gone too far? Absolutely. Oh my God, don't even get me started on political correctness. <laughs> mm. <sighs> Vitamins. Um, yeah, PC is now applied to everything. I mean, we've got a daycare centre nearby that literally rewrote nursery rhymes to make them more politically correct. And one of the examples was that they rewrote Humpty Dumpty in order to make it more acceptable to children. So it had a happier ending in which the, all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again, but they were able to assist him to make sure he was a more functioning member of society. Oh, <sighs> bite me. It's a an egg like god help me but yeah uh, political correctness it seems to have become this sort of almost the mantra of people who just want to sanitize life and make it boring and sort of repetitive and i'm very much against political correctness i hate fuck political correctness there we go fuck political correctness pardon my language but that's my opinion on it uh what's the other question from lucy uh, in today's, uh, oh no, sorry, we just did that. We all have embarrassing moments at times. What are some of your most embarrassing moments on YouTube whilst filming and in public? Um, I haven't had a lot, but I did have one recently and I swear to God, I could have crawled into a hole and died because when I went down to Sydney recently for the Sydney YouTube partners meeting, uh, we were all going to meet up at the Opera House in Sydney uh, before the actual meeting. And what I did was I got there early and there was no one else around, so I decided to go around and do a bit of filming around the harbour. And I had my camera out. I was just sort of filming away like this. And I'm there talking to the camera with... There's a bunch of tourists around as well, so, like, I didn't really care that much. It was sort of like they didn't know who I was. But I kept pointing the camera at the bridge, the Sydney Harbour Bridge, and I kept calling it the Sydney Opera House. And it was driving me mental because I must have filmed the exact same thing 20 times in which I was there going, and as you can see, I'm pointing the camera at the Sydney Opera House, and you could hear these people behind me snickering, going <coughs> like this. And as soon as I've said, I've got, I'm in the Sydney Har Harbour Bridge, damn. Restart again. And I started again. And I must have literally done it like 20 times. And by the end of it, I was just going, you know what? There's a fucking bridge over there. Whatever. <laughs> so that, that was pretty shocking. I just sort of scurry away quickly and sort of hope to God no one knew who the hell I was, which was probably a good thing. I'm not that famous. So <laughs> God, I'm not on television. I would never have heard the end of it. Uh, let's see. Cooking with Karma. Who was your first crush? Oh, God, I hate you, woman. <laughs> um, my first crush... Oh, Jesus Christ. Do you know what's really funny? Is I'm like, I've never thought of myself as being a terribly old person, but it's questions like this that make you feel like you're a thousand years old. Because when you think about, like, the person you have your first crush on, it's often, like, 20 years in the past. And you think back and you go, what the hell was he... What the hell were you thinking? Like, oh my God. But um, I won't give names, but um, there was a PE teacher at school who was absolutely gorgeous. He was just stunning. And he was definitely my first crush. And yeah, that's as far as I'm going with that. <laughs> he was gorgeous. He had 
Oh, it's oh gorgeous. Um, <laughs> what a question. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mini Tipper asks, do you have any other talents besides cooking? Not really. <laughs> no, I've got, I've got, I do all sorts of things, but um, I don't know if my cooking is a talent as such. It's just something that I do. But um, I don't know if I have talents as such. What, what do I do that's talented? I don't think I have anything that's talented. I'm a good listener. Does that count as anything? Um, I don't know. Okay. Let's see. Is he rockin' whiz? Is he rockin' whiz? W-I-S? I, 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 don't, I hate usernames. Can you recommend some books or list some of your favourite books? Um, oh goodness. I don't know. I like autobiography type things, like, uh, especially sort of celebrity type things. I've just finished reading, um, Dawn Fraser's book, Dear Fatty. Oh, Dawn Fraser. Dawn French. Dawn Fraser's The Swimmer. Dawn French's Dear Fatty. I don't think Dawn Fraser would have Dear Fatty, but anyway. But, um, that was sort of touching and funny. It was a great book. Um, what else have we got? Um, I recently started reading Million Little Mistakes, which is like a grown-up version of a choose-your-own-adventure book. And basically, you start out with the same scenario. You win hundreds of millions of dollars in the lottery, and then you have to decide which path you take. Do you want to continue working, or do you want to quit your job? And then from there, you get all these different scenarios, and depending on which way you go, you end up with a different ending to the story. And... At the moment, I quit my job, I took a cruise, but we got invaded by international terrorists and everyone was killed except me, so I decided to take a holiday to Sex Island. That's as far as I've got so far um, on the current scenario, but um, it's a great book. And there was another one in that series called Pretty Little Mistakes, and that was a great book as well. So that's a couple of recommendations for you. Um, where are we? Let's see. Miss Burpee, my Burpee, my Burpee. Okay, uh, will you marry me? I'd love to marry you, but I've met your husband and I've got to be honest, I think he'd beat the shit out of me if I married you. <laughs> I, I'll marry you if it's an equal three-way marriage that way so no one's hurt and no one misses out on anything. That seems fair. Um, where are we? Ah, the Kiwi Cook. What did you look like in high school? Honestly, pretty much like this, but just a little bit thinner. I was always a big guy, but um, yeah, I haven't really changed that much, I don't think. In fact, to be honest, I don't even think I've got any photographs from back then, which is probably a blessing in disguise. Um, yeah, I, I haven't really changed that much, at least I don't think I've changed that much. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty certain I don't have any photos to show you, but yeah, that's probably... Pretty fair assessment, yeah, pretty much the same. Uh, what's his other question? You are the one pot chef, but how many pots do you really have? So many, I don't have room in my cupboard to put them in. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I was in Kmart a couple of weeks ago, and I'm one of those people who should not be allowed to go shopping unattended because when I go out, I always seem to come back with something for the kitchen. And on this occasion, I bought this enormous stock pot. Like, this was massive. It must be like 30 or 40 litres. And you know me, it's like it was a bargain. I can think of no logical reason why I would actually use it. It was just one of those things where, you know what? It's $10. It's a bargain. I'll buy it. I can't fit it in the cupboard. It's actually too big and too tall to go in the cupboard. So I've actually had to put it on my kitchen counter for the time being while I come up with a better place for it. And I couldn't fit it on top of the cupboards at the top where I store other things. And I thought, oh dear, okay. So that was a rather ill-advised purchase. But how many pots I've got, I've probably got somewhere in the realm of about 10, 15, if you include frying pans and things like that. I've got a few. So <laughs> I need to have a clear out and get rid of stuff that I don't use, I think. Um, what would you take with you to a desert island? That's from, oh, I've got another username. I'm probably saying this wrong. Hadazarbit22? Hadazarbit? I, I, I don't know. Um, okay. What would you take to a desert island? 
coffee. Um, music. I couldn't live without music. I need music in my life. I think everyone needs a bit of dance in their life, especially disco. <laughs> um, I don't know, and someone to talk to would be nice. Although, admittedly, I'm a bit of a nutcase as it is. I'd probably just invent people in my head to talk to. God knows that's how it works here. Um, what coffee are you drinking during the filming? Uh, <laughs> Nescafe Instant. It's, it's, not, it's nothing fancy, but it's, it's nice. It's, it's edible. Mm. Uh, what is the best recipe for pie crust for apple and meat? From VidGirl4444. 44. Okay, time for a secret. I hate making pastry. I hate it. I actively avoid making pastry wherever I can, simply because I think it's a pain in the ass. I so often will just go and buy frozen pre-made pastry and I will use that. I know it's really bad, but that being said, I did actually film my quiche video the other day, I actually did this huge chicken quiche in a big uh, rectangular dish and I actually did make pastry for it and it was good. Um, and it wasn't anything terribly fancy, it was just sort of uh, butter and flour and a bit of salt and some egg yolks. Um, that was all that was really in it. So that will be going up in a couple of weeks time so you'll be able to see that on the cooking channel. Um, other than that, as I say, I generally avoid making pastry like the plague because I just can't stand it. <laughs> it's just, I, I used to be able to make it in the food processor, but like, again, it's another example of, well, is it worth doing all the extra washing up and stuff like that when I can just get a frozen sheet out of the freezer? So I know I'm a lazy, lazy, bad person. Okay. Uh, Chrissy Moda wants to know, who would you turn straight for? <laughs> Oh, Angelina Jolie. She's got to be the butchest woman in history. Yeah. She's got broad shoulders. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> um, can you say Irish wristwatch three times as fast as you can? Yes. Next question. Uh, <laughs> Irish, Irish wristwatch. Oh, this is going to be fun. Irish wristwatch, Irish wristwatch, Irish wrist, wrist, wrist. <laughs> No, I can't. Next. <laughs> uh, let's see. Can you show us the left and right hand sides of this room? Pocket bike freak 666. Oh dear. I was hoping there wouldn't be a question like this because it's like the worst day for it. Um, this room is currently in a total disaster area at the moment because... I'm currently in the process of getting rid of old stuff and trying to get things done. And this room's become a bit of a dumping ground for stuff we can't fit anywhere else. So this side of the room looks relatively okay. Hang on a second. Oh, where's my screen? I've lost it. There we are. It's like, it's just the bed and the window there, really. Uh, but behind me, obviously, there's the, where are we? Book cabinet and whatnot. And then on this side is where all disaster hits in. You've got a broken chair and laundry baskets and a bag of rubbish and things and this is an up-ended up chair which I'm currently in the process of fixing and I can't twist the computer around anymore but there's a pile of other stuff in the corner over there. There's a heater and a vacuum cleaner and stuff like that. But um, yeah, so great timing for that question. <laughs> Any other time it looks gorgeous in here. At the moment it looks like hell. Uh, so where are my questions? Back again. Uh, where are we? Okay, from My Aussie Day. Uh, single pots and pans or buy a saucepan set, what and what brands would you go for? Uh, I don't buy saucepan sets, mainly because I find that when you buy an entire set of saucepans, usually if they're really cheaper ones as well, I find that you'll get maybe one decent one out of the lot and the rest will be just basically garbage. You can throw them out. I tend to buy all my sort of pots and saucepans individually that way I can really sort of give them a good knock and make sure they've got a nice base on them, that they're sturdy, that they're properly screwed together and welded together or stuff like that, that the lids actually fit, that sort of stuff. Um, 
As for brands, I don't tend to go for any particular brand. I literally just go through and check each one and see if it's what I'm looking for, if it's sturdy and whatnot. Um, I find that when I go to Kmart, often the homemaker brand does some very good saucepans and pots and pans. That's just their generic brand in there. And yeah, I've, I've never had a major issue with them. It's just, as I said, I tend to always go for heavy base saucepans because I find those thin ones are absolutely dreadful. They, they don't distribute the heat properly. You end up burning the bottom of stuff and ugh, heavy base saucepan for the win. <laughs> what a nerd. Uh, let's see. What kind of coffee do you drink? Is it instant like Nescafe or real stuff? Uh, well, I'm drinking instant at the moment. I also like uh, real coffee as well, but I haven't actually got a coffee percolator at the moment. I broke it. So um, I keep meaning to replace it. But to be honest, I'm kind of getting into the Nescafe at the moment because um, somebody gave me a enormous can of it. It's huge. And I've been slowly whittling it away. So... God knows how long it will take me to get through it. But once that's gone, I'll probably go back to real coffee. Uh, <laughs> hmm. Pocket bike freak 666 is back. Do you know what a pocket bike is? I can only assume it's a bike that fits in your pocket, but that doesn't sound right. I would assume it's some kind of scooter, but I don't know. Who can say? Either that or... No, I'm not going to say that because that's offensive. Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to go for a scooter. There we go. I'm probably wrong. Bertofsky Bertie, my little Bertie. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea when I did that. The coffee's getting to me. My question, if there was one YouTuber you wish you would stop making videos, who would it be? If there was one YouTuber you wish would stop making videos, who would it be? Nico, so I could freaking catch up. He's like miles ahead of me. Um, no, not really. <laughs> Um, I don't think uh, there's any particular person that I would wish would stop making videos. I think everyone should come up and make videos. I have no problem with that. Um, if you're talking about personal taste, there's one or two people I think should possibly go and throw themselves in a lake and those long-time viewers will know exactly who they are, so I won't have to name them. Um, let's have a shufti. What kind of coffee are you drinking? Oh, I've done that one already. Um, Rocky Barragan. What is your favorite go-to meal? A meal that when you don't really feel like putting much thought into what you make and always, always have the ingredients on hand. Um, probably, probably something like pasta carbonara because like I always have pasta. I usually have fettuccine in the cupboard at least. Um, and the carbonara sauce is literally nothing. I mean, like, I just had a bit of cream. I've got a bit of egg yolks. I've got some cheese, parmesan cheese. I always have parmesan cheese in the fridge. I love it. Um, bit of pepper. Gorgeous. Um, yeah, that's usually a pretty easy one. Um, I've always got eggs, so I can always make sort of some kind of egg thing or an omelette or a scrambled eggs or something like that. Although I'm not really a big fan of omelettes these days. I don't know why. Got a bit of a weird sort of anti-omelette thing going. Uh, what's your other question there? What is the weirdest or most exotic thing you have ever eaten? Good question. <clears throat> Actually, I don't know what it was called. And I would love to know if anyone out there knows what I'm talking about. And I'm pretty certain no one will. But a f several years ago, I went to this place in Queensland, which is now called Tropical Fruit World, but at the time it was called Avocado Adventureland. It was a pseudo theme park about avocados and tropical fruits, which was based in a giant fruit orchard. And basically they had like a little train that sort of took you around tour of the plantations and things like that. And they had cooking demonstrations. And one of the things they had was that they got me up on stage and they gave me this tiny, tiny little red bean. And they said, put it in your mouth and chew it. Don't swallow it yet. Just keep chewing it, chewing it, chewing it. And I was there chewing away for like a minute while this guy was chatting away. He goes, all right, you can swallow it now. And I'm there going, I don't know why I did this because it didn't really taste like anything. It was like chewing on a nut for 20 minutes, like whatever. He came out and he gave me half a lemon. And he goes, eat it. And I was going to look at him and go, there's a lemon, it's going to be sour. And he goes, eat it. And so I took a bite 
And it was the sweetest thing I've ever eaten. It was so bizarre. It was whatever that bean was coated my mouth and it changed temporarily my taste buds and made everything that I ate sweet. If I had a clump of dirt off the ground, it would have tasted like chocolate. It was, it was bizarre. But I don't know what that thing was called. It was, that was very weird. That's probably the weirdest one I've had. So, hmm. Uh, let's have a look at. I would be so happy and grateful if you or one of your viewers could give me the muffin recipe that makes me shriek out loud every time I take the muffins out of the oven. Uh, I've actually got a muffin recipe coming up. In fact, I've actually got all the footage on here on this camera because I filmed it the other night and I haven't had a chance to take it off the camera and edit it. So we've had a bizarre weekend. I haven't really had time to get that done, but that will be coming up in a few weeks time. So keep tuned, I suppose, or stay tuned and it will be coming to you very soon. Uh, let's have a look at Cheeky chicken head. She's living in my shed. Uh, I have always wondered about how you got your channel name. Do you know, I must have at least three or four different versions of this story, none of which are true, because the great embarrassment of, of this entire thing is that I don't actually remember why I chose the name One Pot Chef Show for my main channel. I know that I gave it a lot of thought, and I remember going through several different ideas and coming up with things and rejecting things. All I remember is that it came down to two choices it was going to be one pot chef or one pot cook. And I think it was at the time, one pot cook just didn't sound right. It sounded grammatically weird and it didn't sound like it wasn't conveying much. I didn't like it. So I thought, oh, okay, well, one pot chef, I guess. And that was kind of where it came from. But I'm not actually a chef. I have worked in a restaurant kitchen doing short order of chefing like stuff like that but I'm not actually a chef chef type thing so um, I've copped a bit of stick over that choice of username over the years but in the end my attitude is if half of these jokers on TV who call themselves celebrity chefs and things like that many of which have never actually worked as a chef can call themselves a chef on TV I figure I've got more than enough right to call myself a chef on the internet and I don't care if that's wrong or deceptive or whatever. The fact is, you don't need to go to university for a decade to know how to boil an egg. So, whatever. <laughs> Not to disrespect chefs, but they wear poncy, funny looking hats. So, <laughs> Not to disrespect chefs, but you're all bastards. <laughs> no, not really. I love chefs. They're my favourite kind of pet. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to get killed. <laughs> They're going to oversee some steak next time I go to a restaurant. <laughs> the chef mafia is coming after me. <laughs> Coffee. Mm. I'm going to behave myself now. Promise. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to find a question. There's a lot of comments on here and not questions. Is it improper to eat chocolate covered coffee beans in the office because of the unsightly bits that stick in your teeth from chlorophyll factor? I don't know if it's improper, but I figure if you're working in an office and you're going to be eating something that has the potential of leaving unsightly bits that stick to your teeth, you'd probably be sensible in taking something with you to brush your teeth or floss your teeth or something like that. That being said, I've never really been a big fan of chocolate-covered coffee beans. I don't like them. I don't know why. I don't mind chocolate. I don't mind coffee. I don't want it chew on a coffee bean covered in chocolate, though. So, what can I say? Uh, Sati Jeff. Let's see. Oh, I'll answer those questions. I thought maybe they were inappropriate, but bugger it. Have you ever been high? Yes, but not in a legal sort of way. As I said earlier, I've got sort of pain medication and stuff that I have to take and I try to avoid taking it wherever possible because it really does give you that sort of being high sort of quality. But yeah, so when I do end up taking my pain medication, I'm often sitting on the couch giggling my head off or just 
completely slowed down. Sort of, oh my god, this TV show is great. But it's better when I turn the TV on. So, <laughs> uh, have you ever hallucinated? Um, good question. Yes, I have. Um, I suppose. I mean, when I had a really bad fever a few years ago, I was a bit out of it. I don't know if it was a hallucination as such, but I wasn't really very coherent and I was having difficulty processing everything that was going on around me. But, um, yeah, that's probably closest to it. Jumbotron815. David, what's your favourite way to cook a chicken and your favourite way to cook shrimps? Uh, I don't cook shrimps. Not very often. Uh, to be honest, I don't really like a lot of seafood. It doesn't agree with me, so I don't cook it very often. That's why I don't do a lot of seafood recipes on the cooking channel. Um, as for chicken, I tend to keep it as simple as possible. If I do a roast chicken, I love to uh, put the whole chicken in a big snaplock bag and I'll put lemon juice and I'll put the actual lemon husks in there as well. Uh, crushed garlic, bit of olive oil, maybe a few herbs and bits and bobs like that, just chuck it in and then just seal it up and you give the chicken a bit of a massage, get it all sort of rubbed in there like that and then you just put it on a plate and shove it in the fridge for about an hour or so and just let that chicken suck up all those flavours that you've added into it and then just roast it and mwah. I actually did a video on that ooh, a couple of years ago, I think. I think it's lemon and garlic chicken. Yeah, if you go onto the cooking channel, I'm sure you'll find it on there somewhere and love it. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, where are we? Selena Fraser. Can I substitute butter and use margarine instead? Do I still put the same amount because I only add margarine? I'll go buy some butter though if I can't, it's not a big deal. <coughs> it all comes down to depending, um, pardon me. That's something in my throat. How inconvenient. Uh, it all comes down to what you're using the butter in. Um, when it comes to things like cookies and uh, cakes and stuff like that, you probably can use margarine, but I think it mostly you should avoid it simply because it doesn't really taste exactly the same, especially when you're baking it. Um, butter is kind of got a distinctive flavour to it. But that being said, if it's an issue of sort of like fat content and stuff like that, there are reduced fat versions of butter, although admittedly butter is fat in itself. There are sort of a sliding scale there. Um, you would just use the same amount though. Uh, yeah, I'd say just go and buy some butter. Go on, get some butter, love, you'll love it. Um, do a video about Rebecca Black's Friday getting removed from YouTube, please, from Matthew Sneddon. Um, no. <laughs> I'm not going to do a video about that. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. Um, that damn song was probably the worst piece of garbage I've seen in years. It was, it was painful and I'm surprised it I, I'm not surprised it became a viral hit. I'm surprised it's become such a viral hit outside of the internet. Like, it actually became quite a common thing in real life as well. So, um, I, I like the parodies of it more than anything else. The original song was just awful. But um, my mate TJ, Tabloid Junk, did a video parody of that song. And it was a crack up. It was a in places, but God, it was funny. I, lo I love the fact that he's there sort of singing, because he didn't know the words, he just started randomly saying things about Scooby-Doo, which was the most bizarre thing I've ever seen. I loved it. Uh, who's next? Soccer player for life. Soccer player for life. Uh, I'm a vegetarian. I feel so sorry for you. I'm a vegetarian, so I was wondering, what is your favourite non-meat food? By the way, you should growl more often. Can you say sexy? Ha, ha, ha. Well, um, <laughs> okay. Uh, favorite non-meat food? Um, I don't know. Uh, it's hard to pick one because I, I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables and things like that. But um, I suppose for versatility, it's got to be rice because you can literally do a thousand things with rice. Uh, same thing with pasta. Um, 
vegetable wise potatoes are a good example as well things that you can literally turn into just about anything it goes with pretty much everything um big thing on carrots recently i don't know i must be sort of like craving carotin or something like that because i've been having a craving for carrots recently maybe i'm pregnant that would explain the puffiness around here <laughs> <laughs> that was the case I've been pregnant since I was 12. Um, <laughs> uh, K-Pots 1. Do you wear contacts? Your blue eyes are so pretty. No, I don't wear contacts. They're real eyes. Real eyes? As opposed to fake eyes. No, it's a real colour. Um, they actually used to be brighter blue, like a darker sort of blue. They actually really stood out before, but um, they seem to have lightened over the last few years. Maybe it's cataracts. I don't know. No, it's not cataracts. No, it's just eye colour seems to change as you get older. I'm not sure why, but they used to be really, really sort of deep baby blue sort of colour, but um, they seem to have lightened up over the years. Um, Peace Frog 1916. That's not a question, but I'm going to say it anyway. I like your little face. And I like the fact that you think my face is little. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, I've already answered that question. Try Burek now. Okay, this is from last video because I said I didn't know what Burek or Burek. I'm not even sure how to pronounce it exactly. I actually, after the last video, I actually looked it up on the net and now I know what it is. It's kind of like what we call a pasty where you've got your pastry on the outside and you've got a meat or vegetable filling on the inside. Sometimes they're sweet, sometimes they're savoury. Um, yeah, they're not terribly common, at least not that particular type of pastry is not common in Australia, but there are similar things to it here and um, beautiful. So I, have, I can say I safely say I've tried it, I just haven't tried one that's actually called that. So there we go. Uh, Revolution GFX Oz. Have you watched Good Games since the bimbo took over? <laughs> And uh, maybe give it another chance. I know I did recently. Big mistake. I don't blame you for saying it was a big mistake. Um, this, for new viewers, I did a series of videos on this channel a few about a year or so ago about a TV show here called Good Game, which rather unceremoniously dropped one of the hosts in favour of bringing in uh, a young pretty girl and who didn't seem to sort of know what she was doing. She had no experience in the industry or anything like that. And a lot of people took exception to it because the person that she was replacing was probably one of the best reviewers of video games that there is in Australia today. And he's gone on to bigger and better things doing other stuff, but it was very unceremonious and there was a lot of rumours going around as to why he was dumped and there was a lot of lies and bullshit going around because people were just kind of coming up with ideas. That being said, I've watched Good Game maybe twice since she was put onto it. I was watching the first episode when she came back and I was just like, ugh, God help us. And I've watched it again recently and Good Game is now just a dumbed down, dumbed down load of rubbish. I just don't even bother to watch it anymore. I used to have it on to record every week and now I just can't be bothered. So um, it's a shame because it used to be a really good show, even though I'm not really into video games, I don't really play many video games these days. Um, it was one of those shows where you didn't actually have to be into the subject to enjoy the show. It's a bit like Top Gear. You don't have to be a car nut to enjoy that show. And Good Game was another example of that. Um, so yeah, I'm sad, but true, that they killed that show Stone Dead when they did that, so, oh well. Um, coming to the last question from Bossy Kangaroo. There's a part of St Kilda full of the most fabulous cake shops and shop windows that you could stare at for hours. Have you been there? And are there any similar places in other cities in Australia? Um, we actually touched on that earlier, oddly enough. How, how odd. Um, I've never been to Melbourne, never been to St Kilda. My parents went there many years ago when they won a holiday from the newspaper in a competition. And I remember my mum told me about how she went to St Kilda and went through this row of these cake shops and patisseries with these astonishing windows filled with this incredibly evil looking stuff. And she said she felt she gained about 100 kilos just by walking past it. So, um... I would love to go there and check that stuff out. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen anything even remotely close to that in any other Australian city, any Australian city. But 
Um, to be honest, I've never really gone searching for it. Um, I haven't really travelled that much around Australia. I've been to Brisbane, but I didn't really do a lot of wandering around the cake shops or anything. Um, Sydney, I'm sure there's a few places out, uh, out in the suburbs that do that, but I don't think there's anything that compares to that row of shops in St Kilda, so who can say? Well, that brings us to the end of this edition of Coffee Time. So if you've got any questions that you would like to ask me for the next edition, as I said before, please drop them in the comments section below. And until next time, see you later. I'm going to finish my coffee. Which once again has gone stone cold. <laughs> oh dear. All right, so questions below and I'll see you guys next month.